the EP podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. Belly on up to the bar. It is Football Friday here on the EP Podcast. Not your normal episode of the EP Podcast. It's Football Friday. If you want the normal episode, don't worry. It's out each and every Tuesday. The most recent one had some good stuff on it. Frank Murray came over, complained about the Bears, and told us all about making beer in the library and how you can scam them out of your fines. We also had some competition between Norm Anderson and Mark Marzullo. Both of them Evergreen Park Village trustees. And on the next episode coming up this Tuesday, we're going to the barn at James J. Sexton Park to check in on the animals as fall approaches. I'm also planning on having some moments from this weekend's Garden and Art Walk. Dan Doyle was on the show a few weeks ago. You can check out the entire interview online and on demand. But there is a Garden and Art Walk going on through Evergreen Park on Saturday. Kicks off at 1 p.m. Take your time. Work your way down the walk until 4 And then from 4 to 7, there's a free concert right in the neighborhood. Outdoor only events. So please do not plan on using your neighbor's bathrooms. We're going to put all the stops on our social media site. So follow the EP podcast. But I'll read them off real quick. Kicks off at the community center right behind it at the Youth Department Community Garden and Mural at 3450 West 97th Street. Heads over to a butterfly garden at 3340 West Maple Street. On to more regular gardens at 9424 South Turner. The EP Library has a butterfly garden, they're number four. Then checking out the Surfing Highland Cow Mural at Core Fitness at 2940 95th Street. Veterans Park has a mural at 97th in California. Native Plants at a Butterfly Garden at 2928 West 99th Place. A Backyard Gallery at 1020 South Turner. A Backyard Labyrinth and Flowers at 9956 South St. Louis. You're going to be right in the area of the EP podcast right there. Then a backyard patio garden and artist vendors at 10216 South Trumbull. And then right next door, or right there next to that address, 10222 South Trumbull, our friend Dan Doyle, who came up with the whole thing, has a front yard concert and backyard garden. Bring your own coolers and chairs and enjoy the day. Coach Jim Ramazinski about to sit down with us and talk about Evergreen Park High School football. Before that, I want to remind you this episode and every episode of the EP podcast brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. You need a bank you can rely on, a community bank, one that understands where you're from. They got you. They're in that iconic building at 95th and Pulaski. They're giving 4% on their savings account. That's better than most CDs. Their CDs are even better, by the way. There's no ATM fees, no matter where you use an ATM, no matter whose ATM you use. There's no overdraft charges. Get in there and visit them. Those are my people over there. My house runs smoother, my business runs smoother because of the First National Bank of Evergreen Park, member FDIC. Ram joining me down here at the bar. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So we missed each other last week, but you probably were like full steam ahead. You had your first conference game. You had Revis. So I want to go over both games, the last, the second non-conference game and Revis. But first off, I got to ask you, did you expect 3-0? and I mean, you're probably going to tell me, we always expect excellence, Chris. And like, we expect <laughs> to win every game and win state. I mean, I, I know that, but I mean, like, did you feel like this was where you should be? Yeah, no, I, I mean, definitely. Looking at our players, looking at their effort, looking at our coaching staff, looking at the schedule, I thought we would be 3-0, and and I'm obviously happy that we have lived up to our own expectations of winning those first three games. And, you know, what, I, what I'm happy to see is even when we have some letdowns on the field, which does happen, you know, our boys are responding well, and uh, they're getting back into it, and into it, and we are – continuing to get better each day. So you had Longwood. We'll quickly mention that game before we get to the one last week because we didn't get a chance to talk about it. That was your other non-conference game to kick off the schedule. I know you were confident in that game, and you won 34-14, so it seems like it was in hand. Uh, you also had things you wanted cleaned up before that game. So how did they respond to your challenge? 
Uh, you know, between me, well, it's not between me and you because I'm on a podcast. <laughs> between me, you, and anybody that's listening to the show. Yeah, you know, I, I honestly thought we underperformed that week. Um, and, you know, this is not a secret to our team. Uh, coaches and I expressed that. Um, I think the boys understood that it's going to get harder and that we have to practice harder. We have to work together. We have to not not sit in the past. We have to continue to move forward. So I thought... You know, we, we ended up winning that game. It was a little bit closer than we would have liked. Uh, but then I thought the next week leading into Revis, we had a great week of practice and we responded well. And uh, we ended up getting the win that week. So it was good. Is it hard to get a team, especially of uh, young people, teenagers like you have, to buy into the idea that they didn't perform well when they're coming off a 20 point victory? Because you got to feel like some of them are like, what's coach talking about? We won by 20. No, I. you know what? Honestly, the good thing is we have, a, we have a, some competitors on our team, and I think they understood that we did not play to our full potential. I think, uh, I think um, we underestimated that team, Longwood. They, were, they had some dudes that we you know, just didn't picture to be as good as they were, and you know, they came out ready to play. And we, for the first half, were not ready to play. And then... You know, it, it's always good if your team can learn a lesson about understanding you have to play four complete quarters and still win the game. So if if that if that's the worst we play all year and we got to win, you know, it was a valuable lesson. You just hope that your players uh, understand, you know, how that feels to not play to your potential and that they respond well and they did the next week. So that was good to see. So you're two and zero oh in that first couple games there, and then you're heading into conference and you face Revis yep. uh, this past weekend, and you you win that game twenty seven to twenty, and it's a conference game. It's your third straight home game. You have five to kick off the season, I which know. I think is incredible. Wow. Yeah, by comparison, down the street on 99th Street. Like my daughter plays for the Brother Ice Mother Macaulay Band, and I keep going. When do you have a football game that you're playing in? She's like, we're still away. They were away. I think they were away their first four. So I think that's always crazy. Like you get used to pro sports where they had these balanced schedules, but it's not that way in high school, is it? Uh, you know, not always. This is not typical, though. Um, five in a row at home does not happen. I've never seen it happen, to be honest. But you know what? For the first year, I'll take it. Uh, uh, yeah, I. You don't even know what it's like to get them all on the bus like this. Yeah, group. yeah. Well, hey, we we have had some experiences with the bus, but not not a game experience yet. So you know, but like I said, our coaches have been around many years. Our players, you know, some of them have been varsity players for this being their third year. They know what it's like, and they know that you know, getting on the bus, traveling to another location is part of the process. And I think we'll respond well when we hit the road, whenever that is. So that third home game uh, against Revis, tell me a little bit about that game. What stood out to you? You know, I thought we came out really good. Uh, defensively, you know, we let up two field goals in the first half. There was a couple times our back was against the wall and I thought our boys really responded well to hold them to field goals. So you, they were driving. And you guys basically was a bend, but you didn't break kind of moment. Uh, well, they were driving. We had a couple uh, turnovers early that kind of threw us off schedule. But defensively, we responded well. Offensively, we had a huge play at the end of the first half. 50-yard touchdown pass with no uh, time left for, uh, from Dejan Feliciano to Ellis Jackson, which was great. Was it designed? When you, when you hear something like that, 50-yard touchdown pass, and it's the last play of a half as the clock is expiring. Sometimes you wonder, you know, was it just basically throw it up? Uh, was there a designed play to go for big yardage? Or was it at more of an improv on, uh, on, on the quarterback's part? Design play, but our quarterback bought some time. Dejan was able to buy some time. And we got a guy behind the defense, and he threw the ball as far as he can, and we came up with it. So, you know, to See, that's crazy to me when it's designed. Like, I always figure maybe broken play at the end because you got to think the other team's thinking, well, they got to throw it up, right? Yeah, I think I think him just kind of, Dejan buying the time, getting himself in space, uh, maybe drew some of the defensive players up because they might have thought he was running the ball. Yeah. And, you know, he just, he, he, he made a great throw. Ellis made a great catch. And we go in the half up 20 to six and that was a good feeling and That's big yeah it was huge and then you know we came out the first drive of the third quarter we received and we scored so so you're up 27 to, to six yep 
And so, like, in the end, that's the most points that you got in the game. You were done at that point in terms of your offensive output. So we're, what happens at the back end of the game? Is it something that disappoints you that it happens? Or are you like, no, 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 it's okay. We don't need to score in every quarter as long as I'm seeing intensity out there and I'm seeing them putting in their best effort. No, Sometimes I, you just don't score. I, I think we took our uh, foot off the gas a little bit, unfortunately. And, you know, this is part of the process of trying to build a team that is going to continuously challenge themselves. So, like, you get a nice win. It was good. But, you know, there's stuff that we looked at on Saturday morning in the film room that we said, Hey, you know, great start, good job. But imagine if we do this all four, you right. know, not just three and a half. Cause at some point you're going to face somebody who's really good. Oh, and if yeah. you get them down and you don't, if you don't step on them and end it, yeah, they're going to come back and bite you. And you're going to be sitting there going, how do we lose that game after that start? You know, and, and the good thing is our boys, I think they understand what it takes, you know, and they're learning. And we have, you know, we have a lot of young guys on defense. Uh, offense is a little bit more veteran skill guys, but we, we still got some young guys out there on the field. And what we have to realize is, you know, that intensity has to stay until the clock's at zero. And we're getting better each week. Uh, we're continuing to be competitive at practice. And, you know, young guys are stepping up um, and we're, you know, we're off to a good start. We want to keep it rolling. It's an interesting thing that kind of pops in my brain when you're talking about uh, the last two games. Both of them, you kind of mentioned, like, we could have done better. We could have scored more points. We may have taken our foot off the gas there in the back end of the Revis game. Is there ever a point in a game where you say as a coach, all right, we don't want to embarrass the other team? Because because I always thought that was silly. Like, in my mind, you just keep scoring because it's not your fault they can't keep up with you. And you want to play at that level for all four quarters because you don't want to teach your guys to ever take their foot off the gas. The game isn't over yet. It's not like they're waving a flag and conceding the victory. But do you ever get to a point where you go that that's the way it's supposed to be? Well, I mean, the the reality is that game wasn't over. You right. know, it was 27 to six. So that's not time to sit back, relax. I mean, I, I guess if you're up by 40 points and there's <laughs> five minutes left in the game, then I guess you could kind of, you, know, like, yeah. you could kind of just kind of figure out a way to get out of there, stay healthy, do all that. Um, but what, what we have to realize is, you know, a three score game with, you know, four, uh, the fourth quarter left plus maybe five minutes left in the third quarter, approximately. Like, it's a lot of time. It's still a lot of time. Yeah. So we have to, we have to understand when it is officially over. And at that point it wasn't, um, but you know what? It's another opportunity for our guys to learn another opportunity for us as coaches to learn. And again, it's always good when you're learning lessons about your team and you're still winning the game. So, you know, I, I, I have, I have some complaints, <laughs> but I also, you know, realize, Hey, you are three and oh, yeah, we're on the right track yeah. and we're hoping to continue. Yeah. I, I think I agree with you. I, I wish the white Sox this year would have learned their lessons without uh, losing uh, so much. I know this is something you can't do. <laughs> But I stopped watching in June. So, I mean, like, I know based on your... Because of socks in the basement, I have to still pay attention to that. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I am a loyal fan, but I also have my limits. No, I get it. And... I completely understand it. Yeah, I would. And, and I'll even throw a football comparison in there. It'd have been nice if the Bears would have learned some lessons about their team, but not been so bad in their first week, right? I mean, like, so you're you're learning them as you're winning, and that's a good thing. Yeah, and well, and it's a good thing because what, what you want with, you know, this team, especially on the offense side, some of those guys have been around. And, you know, a lot of those, a couple of those guys are playing defense as well, but, you know, they, they do know how to win. Because they've been on this level with a great coaching staff uh, for a couple of years here, and they 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 have been in tough games where they pulled them out. And now we're just trying to make sure that it's all our whole roster has that mindset. Because the more we uh, challenge each other at practice, the more we challenge ourselves to get to a higher level. All that does is lead to wins. You can't you can't argue with that. Yeah. The more you push yourself, the higher expectations you set the more likely you are to succeed. So Friday night, another home game, Bremen comes in. They're 2-1 and one right now. So 3-0 and oh, EP versus Bremen. Tell me about this game. Tell me what you expect to see. Uh, well, they got they got some real deal skill guys who can, you know, move with the ball. So it's going to be tough 
uh, at times for us to catch them. But, you know, I know that we're very disciplined. I know that um, we're ready for them. I know offensively um, we have a game plan in place to, you know, put ourselves in the best position to win. It'll be a good matchup because, like I said, they have some uh, they have some skill guys that can really move with the ball, and it'll be exciting. It'll be a good challenge for our boys. Your team right now, when I'm looking at offense, defense, style of play as you go into this fourth fourth game do you feel like that the the team has it locked in what they are at this point and and if you had to describe this team what kind of team is it that you have well I think to be honest I think they're fighters which is good uh that's what you want uh you know as far as like a identity you know I think I think what we're learning to do is to push ourselves and what you want in a team is you want guys who go out there and they're willing to kind of engage, not receive. And we're starting to see more of that at practice. We're starting to see more of that in the games. You know, we, we'd like to see um, our confidence continue to grow. I think it's growing. But, you know, once these guys get fully confident in their ability and their willingness to uh, push it, I think we're going to continue to be on the right track. All right. Anybody you want to highlight? Anybody that uh, yeah, over, over the, the last past, uh, week or so that uh, you, you want know, to? I, there's a lot of guys I want to highlight, so I'm just going to kind of go through a list here. You know, it was good to see uh, Dejan Feliciano throw a few touchdown passes, uh, specifically to Jed uh, Jai. Uh, last game, they had about a 50 yarder. He threw the 50 yarder to Ellis Jackson, which was good to see. Um, Antonio Clay Jones and David Johnson have really been carrying the ball for us and doing a great job, um, you know, scoring, but also getting those tough yards for us. And, you know, obviously we'd be remiss to not mention our offensive line. Uh, Gerald O'Hare, Armani Bravo, Devin Herrera, Eddie Antunes, and uh, Dom Nava. Okay. They've been doing a great job on the offensive line. And defensively, you know, some of those guys are going both ways. Eddie and Gerald, they're really doing a great job. Jaden Pittman stepping up at linebacker. Uh, we had Lonnie Mosley had an interception. Jed Ajayi interception. And uh, Junior. It's interesting, like, when you when you go through the offense and the defense, the amount of guys that are, like, your stars on both sides. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Genesis Ward, a junior to watch. Uh, he's been really impressive for us at the defensive line position. Um, you know, we, we are fortunate that we have some guys who want to get after it. And... You know, Yarim Garcia, another kid, sophomore playing corner. I mean, stepping up to the plate. Um, we're, we're happy where we're at. We're not satisfied completely. We want to continue to get better, but uh, we're off to a good start. That's awesome. I don't know if you heard on uh, on Tuesday's episode of the EP podcast, the most recent one that came out, Frank Murray, the director of the library, came in, and his first, like, four or five minutes, he was just livid when it came to the Bears game. But then he just kept talking about line play. And he was like, we have no line play. And he's like, you have to have line play. And I was like, well, you know, I've gone over that over the years with coaches over at the, with the Mustangs. And I'll have to ask coach about his line. It sounds like your line is doing well. You know, our offensive line and our defensive line, they do a lot of the dirty work. And, you know, maybe their name isn't always in the paper or, you know, on the school announcements every time. But those are the guys that are putting in the work to put our guys in a really good position to win the game. So we, we can't, you know, again, we're very happy with them. We're proud of them, but we want to keep pushing them. All right. Coach Jim Ramazinski, Coach Ram, sitting down here, and uh, we're, we're not going to miss any more like we did last week. That was on me. I don't want anybody thinking that was the coach. That was totally on me. And uh, we're going to have him back here next week. And uh, hopefully we're talking about a 4-0 team. After you take on Bremen, it is at home. You don't have a lot of home games left, folks, because they're getting them all out of the way early. <laughs> Although they do start off with five, so there's one after this one as well. And then then they have one more, which is probably your homecoming, right? Like you have uh, to, yeah. Because it's the only time you actually come back from the road. So yes. That has- <laughs> yes. We're lucky this year. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not hard to figure out when their homecoming is when you look at the schedule. There's only one home game after they've been on the road. So yeah. they have to make that the homecoming game. So, uh, Coach, good luck this week. Great to have you stop by. And uh, go Mustangs. Yep, go Mustangs. Thanks, Chris. It's the EP Podcast. All things Evergreen Park. It's the EP 
Pink Podcast. Evergreen Park.